twist to this theory, the UAB researchers found that mutated SOD1 enzyme was only toxic to cultured nerve cells when it was deprived of its zinc molecule. However, it However, if both of the zinc and copper were removed, the resulting enzyme was not toxic, suggesting copper is necessary for the toxic effect of losing zinc. In this picture, you can see the normal action of the SOD1 gene. It's the, action, the SOD1 enzyme binds to both copper and zinc. The free radicals are removed and the, um, the cells are safe. In the second picture, the SOD1 mutation that's linked to familial ALS, or the inherited form, the mutated version of SOD1 is no longer able to bind to zinc effectively. Here you can see it only binds to the copper and the zinc is left behind. The free radicals are actually produced and more so, um, nerve cells are lost. And in the last one, the sporadic ALS, or the spontaneous ALS, the normal SOD1 can bind to zinc effectively, but there is no zinc available because it's bound to other cells. Free radicals are produced and nerve cells are lost. Symptoms of ALS. The onset of ALS may be so subtle that the symptoms are frequently overlooked. The earliest symptoms may include twitching, cramping, stiffness of muscles, muscle weakness affecting an arm or leg, slurred and nasal speech, difficulty chewing or swallowing. These general complaints then develop into a more obvious weakness or atrophy that may cause the physician to suspect ALS. No one test can provide a definitive diagnosis of ALS, although the presence of upper and lower motor neuron signs in a single limb is strongly suggested. Um, the first test is electromyography, an EMG, a specialty recording technique that detects electrical activity in muscles. Certain EMG findings can support the diagnosis of ALS. Another common test measures nerve conduction velocity. And when you measure the nerve conduction velocity, it's really across the myelin sheet since that's where all electrical currents occur in the brain. So if the, if the signal is weak, that means that ALS is suspected or some other type of motor neuron disease. Um, the next is magnetic resonance imaging, MRI, a non-invasive procedure that uses magnetic field and radio waves to take detailed images of the brain and spinal cord. Although these MRI scans are often normal in patients with ALS, they can reveal other problems that may be causing the symptoms, such as spinal cord tumor, a herniated disc in the neck, cerebromyelia, or cervical spondylosis. Doctors must also take into consideration that because there is motor neuron damage doesn't mean that it's ALS. So what the doctors actually do is use this chart and depending on whatever symptoms are present, they'll map out how to diagnose the person. So if, the, um, if it's a motor neuron disease, that means that there's, um, it's only the motor neuron system affected and they will go through the list. And a couple of examples is of, of motor neuron diseases are the pure motor neuron diseases, um, pure lower motor neuron diseases, spinal muscle atrophy, motor neuropathy, and conduction loss, and Kennedy's, which is hereditary. Treatment. There is no cure for ALS. However, Relazole, made by Relutex, is the first drug approved by the FDA as a treatment. It is known to reduce damage to motor neurons by decreasing the release of glutamate. It prolongs the survival rate of people with ALS for several months, especially those who have problems swallowing. All other treatments are administered when the symptoms are present, such as speech therapy for when the speech begins to slur, or if they have difficulty walking or moving, they would get a physical therapist. Future treatments. In recent news, scientists have discovered that the antioxidants vitamin E and vitamin A, which are fat-soluble antioxidants that protect our cells against radical attacks. These compounds appear to prevent oxidative stress in neurons and prevent neurological damage. As mentioned before, a mutation in the SOD1 gene causes the SOD1 enzyme to attack itself with superoxide-free super radicals. Scientists are investigating how an antioxidant diet 
such as an increase in fruits and vegetables can help treat the disease. As of now, an increase in daily fruits and vegetables to build up those vital antioxidants is advised to healthy community in order to prevent other neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's or Parkinson's. Notable people with ALS. Henry Wallace, Vice President of Franklin D. Roosevelt had ALS. Lou Gehrig, seen here, was a baseball hall of famer who had to end his career early because of muscle damage. ALS has taken on a less scientific, more common name, Lou Gehrig's disease after him. And the reason why he actually died sooner than the three to five years was because scientists, it was new back in the 30s and 40s, and scientists were performing extreme radical experiments on him, which killed him. Um, another person with ALS is Stephen Hawking, who people like to refer to him as the smartest man in the world. He wrote, um, he's a famous phys physicist and author of A Brief History of Time, which has spent multiple weeks on the bestsellers list, who has come up with many of the most important theories in cosmology, such as the Hawking radiation theory. He was diagnosed at 12, 21. He has been living with ALS for 45 years. He's 66 now. Future goals. Um, in the future, I would like to study why the decrease in, of glutamate in the brain results in less or slower neuro motor neuron damage. Also, I'd like to research why mutation in the ALS2, SETX, SOD1, and BATB genes cause amyotrophic dialysis and why variations of the ANG, DCTN1, NEFH, PRPH, SMN1, and SMN2 genes increase the risk of developing amyotrophic atomosclerosis. That's my bibliography. Um, my acknowledgments, I'd like to thank Dr. Brennan, my mentor, my co-mentor, Mrs. McMahon, the institution we worked at, Bronx Community College, Dr. Stad, College Children's Society staff, my family, and you for listening.